I want to go now to Republican Senator Mike Rounds. He sits on both the Senate Armed Services and the Foreign Relations Committee and has been briefed regularly throughout the crisis. Senator, I really appreciate your time. I want to start with you where we are right now. Um, uh, where well, Matthew Chance is literally standing, but it, it, editorially here. Uh, what's going on in Kyiv? The siege, the Russian forces right outside uh, the city lined up. Uh, these next hours, President Zelensky saying oh, could be the assault this night will be very difficult is exactly what he said. Do you believe that he is right, that we are now in these hours where we see the fate of the capital? This would be consistent with the reports that we've received for the last several weeks. Uh, the indication was it would take several days for the uh, very large Russian army to overtake and basically uh, get into Kyiv uh, along with some of the other major cities. It doesn't mean that the fighting would be over, but it does mean that they would have in hand, or at least they would be able to get into the capital city, which, which is not a good sign. Uh, we've been warned that that could happen fairly quickly just because of the size of the Russian force. What I don't think uh, people yeah. knew for sure was how much of a resistance uh, our Ukrainian allies or friends would put up. And it appears right now that they are doing everything they can to defend their homeland. They, they are. And, you know, the, the, we've seen here, Senator, you heard Matthew talking about the 18,000 guns given away in Kyiv to anybody who wanted to fight on the streets, the Molotov cocktails. Um, I have met here so many young men. Some of them spend a lot of time shooting. They all have guns. There's no limit on the number of guns you can have here. They all plan to fight in an insurgency. I, I don't know if you just heard the man I met today, a reservist. He showed up said he's going to destroy the Russians in his country. But I've also Senator, met people with no training or just getting limited training. And suddenly they're being trained in bazookas. They're being trained in mines. They're being trained in Molotov cocktails. Um, everybody has a willingness to fight. And, and it is unbelievable when you see that passion. Have you been surprised by the Ukrainian military and the Ukrainian people and their willingness to fight, to physically fight with deadly weapons in these past few days? No. Look, th th what, what, they're, what they're experiencing right now is their own 911. You remember the feeling in America when we were attacked by terrorists. Now you have a cold, yeah. calculating killer uh, on their border and threatening themselves, threatening their, their government, threatening their, their children, their relatives. Uh, they have no choice yeah. but to stand and fight. And uh, now, look, what we need to do, though, uh, and, and where we can make a difference is we can begin mm -hmm. our programs of continued uh, defensive weapons, uh, offensive weapons. Uh, we can provide a lend-lease program. Uh, look, we're not talking right now about sending in our troops into Ukraine because we don't have a legal authorization to do so. But we can most certainly provide them with lethal weapons to help defend themselves. I think the American people understand freedom and they understand what it means to defend yes. your country. That's something that we all have in common with Ukrainians. Yes, indeed. And let me ask you one quick follow to that that I think is very important now. Obviously, it's clear there'll be no U.S. troops on the ground in Ukraine. That would be a direct war between two nuclear superpowers. But when you talk about providing offensive weapons at this point in the process, are, do you have any fear that that could also provoke a direct attack from Russia and perhaps a very much bigger and more horrific war than the one we're seeing now? Right now, with the attitude that Vladimir Putin has been putting forward, anything is possible. Uh, he clearly uh, has been cold and calculating, and he clearly feels that in that geographic region he has the upper hand. I think he's going to be surprised at the amount of resistance, but I think he's also going to be surprised at the solidarity that members of NATO are going to express and other members of the Soviet or uh, other members of the European Union are going to express. Yeah. And look, what we can do right now is to express as strongly as we can our support. But even more than that, unilaterally, there are some things that we can do to, to limit his ability to wage war. We should be creating as much energy in this country as we possibly can. Uh, natural gas should be, should be not only created, but we should be exporting it as quickly as possible. Same thing with petroleum products. We have to get Europe out from underneath the control of Vladimir Putin. And right now, yes. that means taking away the gas station, which is Russia. Right. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Senator. I appreciate your time.